In this video, I'm covering how to do SEO for free in 2024, because there's a lot of different things that you have to do, right? There's keyword research, link building, on-page SEO, content writing, lots of stuff. And the truth is it can get pretty expensive if you go for the higher end plans and like Ahrefs or Surfer SEO. So I'm covering how to do all of these things. So how to find keywords, how to write articles and how to rank content, basically how to do SEO in 2024 completely and 100% for free. But before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free masterclass, 80 minutes of free training. Just click the link in the description and top comment below. Sign up for that. Exactly what it takes to start a blog and an online business in the 2020s. And let's get into the topic for today. So the first thing to think about when we're talking about SEO here is doing keyword research. So I've made a lot of videos showing you Ahrefs and exactly how to do keyword research. But the thing is we have to rank for things on Google. That's kind of the heart of where SEO starts. And to do that, we have to do keyword research. Now we want to do it actually for free. But the key, uh, the key here is when you're doing and using free tools is a little bit of niche experience because we're going to be using a number of different free tools here. But you have to kind of have a little bit of knowledge of the, the niche that you're in, right? Have a little bit of understanding of what are some of the new things emerging in the niche because we're going to be looking for new and emerging products. You know, 16 to 20 percent of Google searches every year are brand new. So we're looking for new things, these sweet spots and these keywords that we can rank for. But having a little bit of niche experience can help. So I'm going to go over some different tools and examples here. First good tool I like is the free Keyword Surfer Chrome extension. So it's a Chrome extension that you can use that's free with Surfer SEO. And you can use these free versions of Surfer and Ahrefs Chrome extensions. So for example, if I Google best UTV for under $10,000, I see all the results on Google, but then I also see this Surfer result here. And it shows me a number of overlapping, uh, the overlap score to this keyword and others. So it's giving me different keyword ideas in the volume. So side by side with dump bed, all of that. So a little bit of information is helpful. I can also turn on the Ahrefs Chrome extension and it gives me some other keyword ideas. So best UTV for under a thousand used, under 8,000 with dump ad, all of these things. Also people also ask, so which has the use problem. So these are good for like informational keywords and articles that you could write. So a little bit of information in keywords on Google from these free extensions. So you can get some ideas on different articles to write. Another thing you can look at is something like Google Trends. So Google Trends is free. You can use that 100% for free. And then there's an add-on called Glimpse. So this is another Chrome extension that you can turn on or off. You can use the free version to get a certain number of searches per month. But I can look at different categories to see what's new and emerging, the keywords that I actually could write about and rank for. So if I go to like fashion and apparel shoes, for example, I could see something like year over year growth for these top shoes. Now you see it's gonna be blocking out some of these because I don't have one of the highest tier plans here. But you can see like pickleball shoes. Interesting, it's gone up 75% year over year. Lots of different ideas in that niche. So for example, you can just see, so I need to upgrade the plan. So you don't get all the features in a lot of these tools. So you're kind of hodgepodging together certain things, but you're getting enough information that you need. So you can use Google Trends, come up with lots of different keyword ideas, see what's on the upswing in the last three months. One, uh, six months, you know, what's actually uh, rising in search volume that isn't too competitive yet. You can also look at uh, exploding topics for that. So exploding topics, uh, if you use it for free, you can put in the niche. So you could put in like software and then you can see the pro plans, the paid plans. They let you look at the last three, six months or a year, but you can look at the last two years here. You can see different things like AI essay generator, right? looks like it's a good one. It's increasing probably over the school year, right? It drops off in the summer, I imagine, and then it goes up. So you can get some good ideas here on these new and emerging keywords that we wanna write about. Because again, keyword research comes down to ranking for new stuff. We, it's harder to rank for old stuff that's very competitive and saturated. We have to find the new stuff. So exploding topics is a good one. Or for free, you can also use Uber Suggest. So I put in like best camping tents here. Uh, you can get a little bit of information on here. So you get a certain number of searches, not many, right? And you can do a free trial for 150 searches and then cancel the trial after that. But for this one, I put in best camping tents. It shows me the search volume, the SEO difficulty, and some more metrics on that monthly. So you can see other you know, keyword ideas, other variations, content ideas, things that you could write. So this is all, again, free, just things to kind of gauge what's working with different keywords in your niche. So you wanna be niche specific and kind of know what you're going after first to gain all these insights. You can even use like chat GPT, you know, you can put in, I put in like, what are some keywords I can rank for on Google in the ATV, UTV niche? to make affiliate commissions and improve my topical authority. So it's giving me some like ideas and frameworks like product reviews, best ATV tires for specific terrains, right? Different product comparisons, accessories, safety regulations. So it's not gonna give me the exact search volume and difficulty scores like some of the tools will, but it'll start framing my, the ideas in my mind. So when it comes to keyword research in 2024, for example, after all these Google updates in 2022 and 2023, 
there's more of a human first approach to keyword research. So you don't want to have 100% of your articles on your blog, like all optimized, perfectly SEO, only SEO content. So we'll cover at the end of this video, like how to have a good content strategy going into 2024. But keyword research should be a component of your SEO, right? You definitely need it. But it's good to have some niche experience, know kind of what specific articles you're going to write, which we'll cover at the end of this video, but kind of getting a framework based on using a number of these different free tools. So you, what I would do is try to like spot trends with uh, Google Trends and Glimpse and exploding topics, use ChatGPT to kind of come up with some ideas and different categories of content you could write about, and then throw them into Ubersuggest and see what it says, see how difficult it is. Speaking of making money with your website, today's video is brought to you by WPX. So if you're a blogger or you plan to sell digital products online, you're gonna need a good shopping cart. So WPX has created custom hosting plans specifically for websites that use the WordPress WooCommerce shopping cart, and they have three new plans to choose from. So those are PowerStore, Superstore, and HyperStore. Now they're all boosted with all the needed resources for a faster, better performing, and super secure online store. And these are all custom managed WooCommerce hosting plans boosted with more resources for better performance so you can sleep easy knowing your site will stay up when you get that spike in traffic. Plus WPX support is literally the best in the business with a 30 second average response rate. So really fast. Now make sure to click the WPX link in the description for more information on WPX hosting. All right, so let's say that you have some keywords that you actually wanna write. You use the free tools, you found some keywords. Now we actually have to write the content. So how do we actually do that? Well, we can use search for SEO's free article outline generator first. So let's say I'm writing an article on affiliate marketing. I go to this URL, I hit generate outline, and then Surfer SEO will create the actual outline that I can use. Because what's really important isn't just like having all the like stuffing keywords in, that doesn't work, right? But we have to have a clear format with the right headings and generally the right structure of content that we can fill in. So it'll start with this uh, outline. All right, so you can see here that it gives us some headings that we could use in our article. It has how to start affiliate marketing for beginners, the types of affiliate programs, how to start and mistakes to avoid. So it gives us some ideas for headings. Now these aren't the end all be all, right? We can't just plop these into a, into a tool in this order and expect it to work perfectly. This is using AI and GPT-4 to come up with it. Like I don't think I would just have a random heading on Shopify's affiliate program in this article necessarily, but you can take it and know what are some good uh, headings to have. And then what you would do is you could use a tool, free tool like Grammarly free or Hemingway when you start writing this content. So you start writing the content and putting it in here and then you can use a tool like Grammarly which will give you all of these different things that you can add. So it'll give you uh, correctness errors that you can just click and fix, right? Correctness errors, clarity errors, engagement, and then it gives you an overall score. So you don't have to be a perfect writer here for SEO. And what's really important though is if we're doing this for free, it's actually kind of good now because in a lot of ways, yes, we can use a paid tool like Surfer SEO, which will tell us exactly how long the article should be, all the semantic keywords to add, all the headings and everything, right? And that is important. We need on-page SEO, but what's becoming more and more important is the actual, you know, the content, the human elements, how engaging it is for the reader, how quickly you're ex uh, answering search intent, the intro to engage people, all those things that are actually being written is actually more helpful. So as long as you have a good outline and you're filling in the gaps with good human experience based content based on things that you've actually done or know, that's gonna be key, then you can just fill it in and use a tool like Grammarly to fix all the punctuation errors and spelling mistakes. And while you can use ChatGPT or some AI tools to like write articles for you, I do not recommend it. I think that human content is what's gonna stand out in 2024 and beyond, right? You don't wanna just publish 100 random AI articles and Google in the future is like, this is not good, right? With all the helpful content updates, product review updates, they're looking for actual experience not just random AI articles. I think that's why they've had so many updates recently is to kind of combat that. So yes, it's easier and you know lazier, I guess, to just have AI write everything for you. Now you can, if you really want to, have ChatGPT or an AI tool write the initial draft for you, but you have to heavily edit this thing to get it to like a complete human experience based article with no AI. So ultimately, there are no real huge shortcuts to this, especially if you're using free tools, but you can find the keywords you wanna rank for, use uh, the outline generator to create the outline, write the content, make sure it's uh, grammatically correct, add your human experience in, and then click publish. All right, so you hit publish, you've published some articles, you went from keyword research to writing it, publishing it, now what we typically do is 
track the rankings, make sure that we're actually getting rankings over time. So obviously you should use Google Search Console, number one, set that up with your WordPress site. And you can use Google Analytics. So those two obviously can show you traffic, but you can also use something like the free Ahrefs keyword rank checker. So I put in like, you know, best online course platforms as the keyword, my own article on that. And then I can click check the rankings and it'll show me where I rank. So it says you rank number nine for best online course platforms. DR is 79, 543 domains pointing to this. Here's the traffic and etc. So you can see like you can put these individual things in to these tools to find, you know, what you're actually ranking for with these tools. It's when you're using free ones though, it's not quite as in depth. You can't get like every single article of yours in one place, showing you the ranking changes, showing you the fluctuations and all that. The best thing for that in a free sense is using a free tool like this for an individual articles that you see are doing well, just to kind of track progress. But really this one is all Google search, search console, seeing like your impressions and number of clicks you're getting and uh, your general average position for each of your articles. All right, so we've covered keyword research, writing, tracking the rankings. What about link building? So how can we do link building for free, right? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. So the goal here is to do some active link building on your site, especially if you're a brand new site and your domain rating is zero. No, you don't need a ton of links. You don't need to focus on this like 80% of your efforts or anything like that. But it is a good goal to like, I'm gonna get my domain rating to 30 or somewhere in the ballpark of sites in your niche to kind of get in the ballpark of the competition. So to do that, what we can do is we do outreach. So we do outreach, I have videos on how to do guest posting, how to do link building, right? Full video tutorials on those on YouTube. But ultimately we're doing some outreach, we're introducing ourselves to other blogs, to other companies and you know brands in the niche to either write guest posts for them, to link back to your own blog, or build some type of link partnership. So a lot of people they're like, no, we don't accept guest posts, but we actually do guest posts too. Let's, I'll link to you in this one, you link to me in this one. So just start building relationships with other content marketers out there. Now, for outreach to do that, what we need basically is to create a list of sites to reach out to, which is really simple, right? We can use Google Sheets for free to just create that list where we have a column for like their name, their email, website, and then that's kind of your, your list building right, ultimately. But how do we come up with the sites? Well, we wanna come up with like 100 sites in your niche that would be great to get links from. So this could be anything from actual brands in your niche. So if I'm doing like UTV stuff, like I was mentioning, or ATVs, it could be like Kawasaki or the actual manufacturers and the sites that have blogs or dealers, actual people that sell the stuff is a really good uh, one. Other blogs in that niche, or even some like news types of sites. So you build, a list of sites you want to reach out to. Another thing that you can look at is like, well, who's linking to my competition? So you could use Ahrefs free backlink checker. So for example, if I wanted to rank for like how to start a blog, I could look at my own article on how to start a blog, put that in, and then it'll show me what are the other sites linking to this article. So it shows me like EngageBay, HubSpot, Webflow, Nutshell, all these different sites that are linking to my article specifically. And you can look at these and be like, hmm, okay, these could be good sites that I can reach out to, all of these, because these are all very relevant sites. They're linking to this competitor site, and I'm gonna try to reach out to them specifically. And you can see the domain rating and all of that. So when you're just starting out, you know, you wanna aim up, you know, try to reach out to sites that have higher domain rating than you. Maybe you don't start out reaching to DR like 80 or 90 plus sites, but you can reach out to some in the 50s, 60s, 70s, start getting, you know, some backlinks from those types of sites. So what you actually have to do here is you get the list, 100 sites, right, in a Google Sheet, really simple. And you have to find out, well, who do I actually reach out to? So with that, you would use another couple free tools. You would use hunter.io and LinkedIn. So with LinkedIn, you can find the person that works there. So you'd put the company and the website in, then you'd find the content manager, the SEO manager, somebody like that with that job title at that place, you connect with them, you find their name. If you have their company and you have their name, then you can use hunter.io which will give you the cadence of their email, like the formatting. So it could be first dot last name at that company. It could be first name. It could be just last name, but it'll tell you specifically based on scanning the web, what the format of that work email is. So you have the name, you have the email, you punch all of that into Google Sheets, and then you just send the email. So you send targeted guest post, general you know, outreach emails to these sites for link building with Gmail, and you can use a tool like HubSpot Sales, which is a free Chrome extension, and it gives you like five email templates. You click a button in Gmail, and it just pops up the entire email ready to go. And then you wanna personalize, add the first name, make a personalized first sentence, right? And send the email asking for 
guest posts, link partnerships, and all those. Now remember, when it comes to link building, I have other videos on this, make sure to check those out. But links, links are a value exchange, right? You have to come with something of value. You can't just ask for things with nothing in return. So there's certain sentences you can add into those emails like, you know, I write a lot of other guest posts on other high DR sites and I can link to your site in those. And you're starting to open the relationship. Keep it a little bit broad. Don't be pushy and ask for stuff. This is definitely an art form. You know, I could talk about that forever just to do outreach emails. So again, you don't need link building uh, specifically, but if your DR is zero, you know, try to get it up to like at least 30 so that you can start competing and ranking across the board for a lot of different keywords. So before we get into one of my favorite SEO tools and exactly what I would do step by step, uh, I want to cover a couple other notable tools here that are free that you can possibly use. So Moz has a number of free tools. If you go to this, their free SEO tools, you can get to this page and it'll show you all these different ones. Really one that I use that isn't even listed here is just their title tag analysis. So it's moz.com slash learn slash SEO slash title tag. And you put in your title and it'll give you what it looks like. So I paste that in, right? You check it and it gives you the exact title here. So you can see when it gets cut off, what it looks like. You wanna make sure that it doesn't get truncated so that you can see the whole thing. So this is really good, just a simple tool to show you and preview what your meta title or your, your title tag will actually look like on Google. So that's the main one that I use. Another really good uh, honorable mention here is Screaming Frog. This is a good SEO tool for technical analysis and checking on the technical stuff if there's anything broken or messed, broken or messed up with your site. So you can analyze like broken links, analyze meta description, like are there duplicate meta descriptions? Are your tags messed up? Is there anything? Are there duplicate pages? And for free, you can get all of those things and up to 500 URLs to check. So it's a really good free, you know, technical analysis tool. So I think ultimately my favorite free SEO tool is Detailed. So detailed.com, it's a Chrome extension that kind of does a little bit of everything and it's completely free. So you can go to detailed.com to check it out and you add it as a Chrome extension. So you can add it to Chrome, you can add it to Firefox, but it kind of works on a lot of different levels. So if I go to an article of mine, for example, I can click on the, the Chrome uh, tab here and it'll show me an overview of this page. So like my article on how to start a blog, it has the title, the description, URL, lots of information on it. You can also see all the headings. So you can analyze the competition and what headings there are links, so all the internal links and the external links on the page, images, schema markup, all of that different stuff that you can see. And what you can also do is really cool is you right click and you go to this detailed SEO extension menu and then you can perform a site domain.com search. So you can perform a Google search based on looking at this domain for competitive research. You can do other types of Google searches. You can look at things in Ahrefs, archive.org for history of it, BuzzSumo, Majestic, Moz, SEMrush, SimilarWeb. And it's just a good source of all kinds of information. It's probably the best free tool that in a general sense in a broad overview that you can see page level metrics, you can track things, you can use the menu to find other things. So I really like the detailed uh, Chrome extension. So ultimately, if you're going to do SEO for free in 2024, here is exactly what I would do, right? So first we start with keyword research. So we wanna come up with like 20 article ideas. Now in 2024, we don't wanna just you know, write all SEO optimized articles and transactional things and try to just be an affiliate site. We have to think broader than that. So I would say in one niche, know what your niche is, have 20 articles that you're gonna write. Out of those 20 articles, let's do 15 of them for keyword research. Five are just gonna be really good articles based on your experience with no SEO. You're just doing them straight up for your audience and making them as good as possible based on your experience and as helpful as possible to your specific audience. Now out of the 15 we do keyword research on, I would say 12 can be informational articles that you find that are really helpful. And then three can be transactional articles for affiliate revenue. So like those best posts, best UTVs, best ATVs product comparisons, things like that. So remember, based on that, we are writing for your human audience first. So out of the 20, 15 can be keyword research. So get those 20 article ideas in using all these free SEO tools. Then you're gonna write the article. So you can use Surfer SEO's free outline generator plus Grammarly to write the articles. And this again is more about the intro and engaging content and human experience stuff good writing throughout based on actual search intent, not just stuffing a bunch of keywords in there. Then you're gonna publish your articles and over time, you know, set a cadence of maybe every three to six months, you decide to update the article with at least, you know, some good updates. Maybe you rewrite the intro, make it better, right? We can always update articles to make them better. Add 250 words of new content or maybe there's stuff that needs to be removed that isn't that, you know, unique or specific. So there's lots of things you can do uh, to update the articles. And then we wanna do link building. So come up with a list of 100 sites 
You want to target for guest posts and link partnerships? Use Ahrefs' free backlink checker, put competitive articles in, see who are linking to those articles, build your list. Go to Google, you know, find the top brands in your niche. Sites that you can reach out to for links are often the sites you'd be an affiliate for. So for example, if I wanted to rank for online course platforms, I'd probably want to reach out to Teachable and Thinkific and Kajabi and all of those actual platforms. And I did, and they linked to me, and that's why I'm on page one for that still. Um, so create a list of 100 sites. Use Hunter and LinkedIn to find the names and email address of the SEO and content marketing managers to reach out to. Email them with Gmail and HubSpot sales. Follow up over time, keep track of everything in Google Sheets. And you just focus on those two things, content and links, and that thing never ends. Focus on publishing content, getting backlinks, and just keep building your authority, your topical authority and your link authority. And you'll eventually get your Google traffic up and you'll start making money. Now, SEO is very nuanced, right? There's a lot of different details here and we could miss one thing. So you can hack your way with all these free tools, right? But if you really wanna take it to the next level and I'll tell you exactly you know, what I would do, make sure to watch the free masterclass. So it's 80 minutes of free training, exactly what it takes to start a blog in 2024 and make money from it. So I hope you found the video helpful. I know I get asked a lot about the free tools. So I hope you found you know, a tool in here, at least one that you can use. So please comment you know, with any tools that you are using. If I missed any, I'm sure I did. So add them in there, that could be helpful for everybody. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.